Good evening, guys. Christian Williams here from ChristianWilliamsPT.com. Thanks for tuning in. I'm here with performance doctor, very well recognized and work with some top athletes, Michelle Gainey. Is that, yes, that correct? Yeah. Um, he's going to be introducing himself and we're going to ask him some questions. Um, just understanding his mindset and from his own training and how he's worked with different athletes all over the world and got him to peak perform winning gold medals or whatever it is and kind of understanding what's needed in terms of the body and the mind so nice to see you again it's been a while yeah it's been a while pleasure yeah so what you been up to in the last few weeks since i met you uh, week i've been traveling a lot i just came back from sri lanka for a while to do a speak uh, to a young graduate of university and then uh, right now i'm in transit in london airport coming from montreal where i did some work with one young uh, Canadian eye jumper, which is the son of my first athlete that I had in 1967. Now he's 23 years old, so the father asked me, can you come and work with my son for a while? So that's why now on my way back to Kuala Lumpur to catch up with my corporate business with uh, uh, company entrepreneurs and to do basically performance at work, performance and sport. The name of the game is performance, human performing. And, and it's all about very similar, whatever you do it in bodybuilding and athletic or managing a corporation or being a manager in a factory at the end it's human performance and that's basically what i do i help people to enhance their performance to bringing them a different understanding about what performance is all about most people when we think about human performance we calculate normally energy output burning calorie uh, most people understanding it's all based on food intake a uh, nutritionist, dietitian will prescribe what kind of food, like right now you are in bodybuilding, preparing for major competition, you know your diet is very special, only protein, no carbo, your skin might be like paper and everything, most people don't understand how tough your diet is. But from the field I come from, it's a different understanding about the human body. Human body is 53 in cell. It's more than 600 muscle and that many bones and so on. So it's basically every cell of the human body is charged electrically, a positive and negative pole. So of course my job is to a body mind approach is to enhance the electromagnetic capacity of the athlete under performance. I worked for several years with the Institute of Technology of St. Petersburg uh, with Dr. Vincent Korotkov, who worked with the aura, the energy field of people. And of course they measure it since uh, Atlanta Olympic game, they measure the athlete electric uh, magnetic force before competition. And from their observation from all these years, all athletes in the final are physically ready all athletes are properly eaten, all athletes are injury free, but what makes the difference is the one who wins is usually the one who has the highest level of electromagnetic field around itself. And of course the big question is how can we increase that? Because people don't seem to understand that the human body is purely a big battery. You know, we have a positive side on the head and we have a negative side on the foot. So we can measure in fault what is the voltage of a human being. And of course most people never talk about that, never mention it. But this is very old knowledge. So it's, it's an energy field and it can be felt. So that's why most of my approach is performance must be felt and not felt. Many people talk about positive thinking, mindset and everything. I would say, oh, this is words, 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 words. The idea is we have to stop using words. We have to start talking about bodily sensation. How does it feel when you perform at your best? And most of the athletes, when they perform at their best, they are in what we call the zone, they are in trance, they are in an altered state of consciousness. And most of the top athletes I've met in the last 50 years, when they perform really their best performance, you ask them, how did you do that? They say, I did what? They have zero recall, zero memory. Most of the top performers are done totally unconscious. Of course, what is consciousness? Now we know that it's a lot about the vibration and frequency because we are electric. As electricity it can be measured in wave, it's all about frequency. We measure it in megahertz. And of course, the whole idea is how to increase my level of megahertz to enhance my vibration level. And when I did perform at a high level, very strangely, we read a subconscious level of mind, which most of the people experience an incredible bliss, as some kind of an ecstasy, a joy, or a trance, without recalling what really happened because it's happening at a very high speed, at the speed of light in the nervous system. And basically so, the approach is by using a special bodily uh, technique, which very strangely is mostly based on breathing, inhalation, exhalation. Okay, so uh, first language, of all... I would say anabolization, catabolization. So, because everything is... You, yes? 
So first of all, well, how good. would you measure the magnetic field? And just bring the camera down a little bit, Michelle, so we can just see your voice uh, face, it, obviously. Um, first of all, how would you ma uh, measure the vibration or the magnetic pulse, let's say? The, you know, the North well, and South it's, Pole, let's call it. We see the conductance of the skin, we can measure it in megahertz. And of course, we, we can measure also the brain wave, the brain frequency. And the brain frequency, the subconscious mind, is basically theta brain frequency. So, of course, most of my work is to train an athlete to master the theta brain frequency, which all of us experience in deep sleep at night. So, the idea is to be in a sleep state fully awake. Okay, so and, I, and imagine, like, yes. I imagine things like uh, meditation and these things would come in very beneficial effects. It's very similar to meditation, but the whole idea of meditation is to be uh, experiencing something else. In the purpose of sport or even at work, it's mostly to be able. I don't like to use the word meditate because for many people, meditate equals religiously connecting. The idea is nothing to do with religion. It is purely connecting to what are you preparing for to perform. So it's all based on performance. Uh, for an athlete, like I work with a high jumper. The high jumper, it's a matter of two second effort. Few step, step bonks, and that's it. So okay, the so perception is purely at the physical level. It is, there is no thinking, you don't think. More you think, less you perform. So okay. it's a total, toutless performance. It's purely sensation. So you have to purely sense your body doing the performance. Of course, it's difficult to explain in a short while, but depending on the performance, the level of the tip of activity, it is able to identify what are the sensation. The problem with most people, we live in a world where literacy dominates our world. We want to put words on everything. And basically, the idea of experimenting a performance is don't try to use words to describe it. It's like being in love. When you're in love, it's something you feel with the person you are in love with. But can you describe what the heck it is to be in love? It's a sensation. It's a multi-sensory perception of something. Putting words on it is extremely difficult to put words on it. So it is the same thing in sports performance. Uh, I met Nelly Kim in 1976 in Montreal when she performed against Nadia Pamanici. Everybody knew Nadia. Uh, and Nelly Kim won the field event, the, the floor event. The only event that Nadia didn't want was the floor. And I had the chance to talk to Nelly Kim many years after when she came to Malaysia. And I said, Nelly, can I ask you one thing? That event that Nadia didn't win, what happened to you when you win that event? She said, the only thing I remember, I came to the floor, they called my name, I wave to the judge, I wave to the crowd, and then the music starts. And then after that, the only thing I remember is I'm at the end of the floor, and I see the crowd standing in the Montreal Stadium, everybody's applauding, and that's it. So I totally and understand this. Given, but I... she remember absolutely nothing. Her experience where I was like a ball a ball of light, like a, like a nightly. Okay, so what, what I want to know from you, right, nothing. is, because I, I totally understand this, because when I go into my performance, when I'm training, when I'm on stage, when I'm speaking in front of wherever I'm speaking in front, I do the same. It just happens, it flows, and then I wake up, and it's an experience. It. So what I want to know from you is, what about these athletes and this mindset, obviously to get into this flow state, to get into that calm state where everything just comes out naturally, what about when you're not performing for that two second jump or that you're not in that Olympic arena? What's the mindset then? Okay. And how would the, you control problem, that? The mindset, usually people think about what do you say or what do you think? The whole idea is don't think, don't use words. You have to recall the multi-sensory impression that you have. And it's very funny, me have done dancing. How do you recall that the flow? It is just by moving. It's in the motion, it's in the sensation in the shoulder, it's in the neck. It, it's really the expression of a flow. You float. It's a dance. It's like tango. You move, it's a motion. You don't think this. You don't count the step one, two, one, two, one, two. You just flow, you follow, you are the music. Everything is in harmony. And, and the question is, is most of us, we think too much. Best performance, like you say, you've experienced what it is to be on the flow on stage. When you're in the flow, you don't think you are just living the present, the moment. You are okay. present. So I, I suppose like the question is we want to know 
is how do you get into the flow? Is it through NLP techniques? Is it through breathing techniques? Is it through, like you said, meditation? How do you learn and how do you develop that type of flow so you can perform? I like what you said. Immediately when I like when you say NLP, neuro-linguistic. Linguistic, that's the problem. NLP doesn't work, it uses words. No words. Purely sensation. The, the trigger is in the nose. We have olfactory mucosa, and olfactory mucosa is connected to all the cranial nerves. And people always talk about left brain, right brain. We have three brains in the human body. The brain that is in our skull is one brain. We have a brain in the heart, and we have a brain in the stomach. And these are the brain we have to connect with. And the way to connect to it is through the nose. First, most people don't realize that both nostrils trigger sympathetic and parasympathetic. When we perform, we are normally very sympathetic, very preparing the fight or flight type of thing. So we have increased cortisol, heartbeat increase, body temperature preparing for fighting. But the problem with many people, when this go too high, they lose control. So it's like if you're too much aroused, it, it is counter performance. So how to rebalance? The opposite is the parasympathetic. Just, just parasympathetic. bring the screen down a little bit, Michelle, yeah? So we can just see it like that, yeah, go on. So the um, parasympathetic state. So it's learning to balance sympathetic, parasympathetic. And very funny, it's like Buddhism, it's the middle path. It's you have to be extremely aroused, but deeply relaxed. So when things get tense, you have to loosen up, you have to relax. And how to relax is first to understand that breathing with one nostril will trigger one side of the nervous system, and the other nostril will trigger the other side of the nervous system. Another thing is most people have never learned to breathe. From the moment we're born, we breathe until we die. But breathing must be slow. Inhalation must be slow by the nose. Most people breathe fast, in, out, in, out. Mm -hmm. And to train the nervous system, to train the body, to experience that flow, is first to understand is breath holding that increase performance. Breath holding is connected to increase of pH, lactic acid. So we have to learn to be more tolerant to lactic acid in order to perform in anything. Under stress, lactic acid increase. But more you tolerate, more you can perform under pressure. But the name of the game is performing under pressure. Without pressure, no performance. People hate pressure. People hate stress. You have to eat stress for breakfast. But you have to understand that when my body is in a high level of stress, how to turn it into a positive stress is by learning to relax when I'm I distressed. And how it is done, very strange, is through breathing technique. First, to understand that breathing is by the nose. The nose is for breathing, the mouth is for eating. Most people, mostly athletes, breathe by the mouth because everybody thinks you need oxygen. There is oxygen, when you exhale, there is still 17% of oxygen. We are never lacking oxygen. Oxygen is all the time. But many people think, I need oxygen, so I need to breathe more. They don't understand. You don't need to inhale, you need to exhale the CO2. CO2 is linked with lactic acid. And this is how it is mastered, is by mastering the breath holding techniques. Of course, I won't go into the detail of all this is done, but basically it's the breathing technique. And first to recognize we have diaphragm. So before, diaphragm. We, before we go into the breathing techniques, right, I want to jump in there and give you the last few weeks I've been studying more of um, meditation and yoga and obviously chakra alignment and so forth. And I've been and listening to a lot of podcasts. Like, um, you know, Ben Bukowski, I actually spent some time with him when he, he was talking about breathing and how to go from a parasympathetic state and into a sympathetic state, sorry, how to raise up when it's needed. So I was experimenting a little bit of that with my own training. And what I found is I've always been attached and married to a type of training where I felt like I had to be in that aggressive state. So I drive to the gym, drinking my pre-workout with my hard rock music on and I pull up and I'd walk in with a face on. And that's kind of what I thought I had to be in. And then from studying more meditation and yoga and listening to people obviously that been at a higher level and so forth, I started really being in control of my, my breathing for one and my heart rate. So what I would do is I would allow my heart rate to spike or my adrenaline to peak when I needed it, like just before I was about to perform. And then I would, through breathing, I would bring it back down and I would just monitor my heart rate for my own pulse. And what I found is not only was my mind clear, so for example, I wasn't thinking about thoughts like, you know, let's prove them wrong or let's do this because you were better or whatever, like egotistical driven thoughts. My mind was clear. 
So all I was focused on is getting to the next rep, getting to the next set, keeping moving forward throughout the duration. And I found my performance was on another level. I mean, like I was able to just keep going and going because I wasn't distracted by thought. Um, I wasn't stressed because every time I, I was stressed, I was bringing it back down. Um, and I was able to perform at a much better rate and my recovery was better. So I definitely try and implement that to my own clients and tell them, you know, to kind of bring that heart rate down. Obviously, we live in a world nowadays, we, we're not uh, talking about athletes in general. That's brilliant. We work in a world where stress is everywhere. So, you know, it's exactly. really, it, like you were saying, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to keep that stress level low when we've been injected by stress all the time. So are you saying practicing breathing on like a daily basis in, in just general life, not just in performance? Well, I would say we don't realize we breathe 20 to 30,000 times a day. Wow. I would say just increase your awareness of more breath in and out. And learning that once in a while, hold your breath which most people don't do, we inhale, we exhale, we inhale, we exhale. The idea is inhale slowly, slowly is the key, inhale slowly, hold your breath for a while, exhale slowly by the nose, and hold your lung empty for a while, and you have 20 to 30,000 opportunity to do this every day. So how many breathing? As many as you can be aware of consciousness. And when you focus your attention on your breathing, you realize that your mind is not thinking, your mind is not talking, your complete awareness is on your body, the air that goes in and out. And of course, we have to learn to breathe by the belly, belly breathing, the diaphragm. And of course, for I think another thing they don't realize, we have a diaphragm lower down at the pelvic level, at the, at the perineum. And we all know that all the energy comes from the intestinal area. The, 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 the Japanese call it the ara center. That's where the energy comes. Every motion comes from the pelvic area. And then the energy is just move out. But most people focus attention on special muscle group, not on energy. Energy, electromagnetic energy. The Chinese call it the chi. The Indian call it prana. Uh, in America, they call it bioenergy. Whatever one you want to give it. We have to get out of the concept that energy is only calorie that we burn in our muscle. Energy is electromagnetic, and this is what makes it a propulsing thing at incredible speed. Like in your sport, you hold position, very static for a few seconds, for a few minutes. Many people don't realize how demanding it is, how exhausting it is. But when your mind is focusing purely on the beauty of the gesture, like you say, on the flow, the joy, the ecstasy of doing that position, that's it's what brilliant. it's all about. So suddenly your mind is on the sensation, mm. on the feeling of doing it versus the pain of the difficulty or the adrenaline rush or whatever, which is all distraction. The mind gets distracted. More the mind is calm, more the body can perform. We don't ask the body to perform. The body job is just to perform. And how it is performing, it is just exhalation, it's catabolization. Let it happen. We don't make it happen. We have to let it happen. More you want it, less you get it. Less you want it, more it's happening. And sometimes many people experience the flu accidentally. They didn't want it. So then they say, what happened? And they say, how oh, can I be like this all the time? It's very simple. 20, 30,000 opportunity every day, reading. Are you aware of every breath that goes in and every breath that goes out? So we have what would 20, you say? Um, thousand time of practicing everything. So we should always breathe in for the nose, obviously, and breathe out for the nose. Always but we should hold it in. The idea is slowly. So because breathe in one thing slowly. That I mentioned, the nose produces one, one chemical. It's called nitrate oxide, and it is produced by the nose. And when we inhale slowly, and nitrate oxide, when the lactic acid increases, nitrate oxide increases the transfer of oxygen from the blood to the muscle. Without nitric oxide, it doesn't pass. And everybody know that people who have cardiac arrest, you know, there's a small pill they put under the tongue. What is the name of that pill? Nitrate. Nitrate accelerate the transfer of oxygen from the blood to the muscle. And our nose produce this chemical when we inhale. Brilliant. 
enjoying the freshness of the air that goes in the nose and remembering that the nose is not the thing we see outside. It goes up to the sinuses. It goes down here in our skull. The nose is a big cave inside the skull. And all around there, there is nerve connections. And by nose breathing, we become more conscious of our body in the moment, in the present. And we are, when we are living in our body, suddenly our talkative mind stop. We live in the present, in the moment, and the only reality is the moment and the present. And I've experienced with so many athletes, most of them, when they perform at their best, they're in the flow, they're in the zone. Scientists try to describe with words something they have never experienced. You know, I met some of these people who wrote about the flow, about the zone and anything. I've asked them, have you personally ever experienced it? No. So it's by interviewing athletes, now they try to put words on a sensation they never had. They want to yeah. understand that cannot be understood without experiencing it. Yeah. You've experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. I know. Those who listen to us who have never been in the flu, they say, what the heck these guys are talking about? I, I kind of, um, it's right in a word, it has to be felt. It's it funny, a conversation I was having with my wife last night because I, I went to one of the Toastmasters event because I want to improve my speaking ability and that's why I'm reaching out to a lot of people because the more comfortable I get speaking, the more the the bigger the mess I can deliver. So um, we went and it was a little competition and I was up performing. Um, it was kind of like random. They just drop something in you, like, uh, you know, give you something to talk about instantly and then you have to respond. And I said on the way home in the car, it's funny when I'm doing these speaking or when I'm performing or even when I go into a set, I can't recall what happened. If I look back at, and I recorded it, everything went perfectly well, but it's like I, it's like a blank out. I'm just in a state where remember. everything just seems like a blur, but it's executed perfectly. Like if it's been recorded over and over and it's perfectly practiced, it's the same like when I go into a squat or when I go into any any movement, and like I said, performance. Once I come off stage, I'm like, I just don't know what happened, but everything just kind of went. And it's like a moment in time you can't even remember, but it, it yeah. went through. It's like, like you were saying, it's your subconscious look taking over. It's kind of, you're in control exactly. now of not of your conscious mind. It's, happen it's happening at the subconscious mind. When we want to consciously relate with it, we have no word to describe it because we don't remember. So, it's an experience, it's a moment, it's, it's a felt sensation. And now you realize you experience it in the gym with your barbell, and now you say, I'm on stage at the Toastmaster, and I experience the same thing. Now you know the flow mm. is a sensation when I perform. And you can start performing in any other thing, which my God, it's the same thing. So performing is have, performing. Let's say you had an athlete now who's got incredible potential and they've got, you know, great genetics, they've got a good foundation, and this is a lacking point to theirs. You know, for whatever reason, they, their mind capacity is just so cluttered. What would yes. be the first thing that you would work on? Obviously, you, you know they've got bags of potential. You're the coach, you know, it's your job. So how would you take somebody from that level and kind of what type of structure would you put them in place to get them to the next level? Well, me, I would say, putting them into an experiential situation, they have to f experience it. You have to experience the flow to know what it is. I cannot use words. I have only to put you through exercises, and one of it is through breathing, to breath holding. We work on how, how long can you hold your breath. I work with Stig Severinsen, world record holder, more than 20 minutes holding breath underwater. Have you wow. ever heard of a human being underwater for 20 minutes without breathing? No. Well, the dolphins can do this half an hour, no problem. We are mammalian and we have what we call the dolphin reflex in our brain and we can master it. Most people can very easily hold their breath two, three, four, five minutes after a little training. But when you go there, there is something happening in your brain because our brain has been pre-programmed from birth. Mm. We inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. We have to break the pattern, we have to reprogram. That's why when you were talking about mindset, we have to reset the mind. Well, how do we reset the mind? We have to deprogram the breathing pattern that we have since birth. And how we deprogram it? For inhale, hold your breath. Never learn that. So then the brain gets shocked. Hey, what are you doing here? Why are you holding the breath? I've been pre-programmed, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So then you now you hold the breath. Then you exhale, hold the lung empty. 
Michael, what are you doing there? So the brain is in shock. So you force your nervous system to reprogram itself. And through that experience, you discover very slowly, my God, when I'm experiencing this, I am not thinking. Thinking is not part of the physical process of performance. And now you realize, in Toastmaster, I performed. Why? I don't remember what I said. But it was cool. You won the contest from what I heard. You, 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 top, you top the list. And you say, my God, I'm not even an experience. But you know one thing, performance under pressure, you've been there as an athlete. And your body has experienced what it is to be under pressure. But the other taste, those matter, guys who are not athlete, they were under pressure like you, but they could not handle the pressure like you were able to because you had a previous experience of it. So suddenly you become a champion when you are a, be a beginner. How can I beat these guys who are not a beginner? I'm a beginner here. And I beat them because your body has memories of performance under pressure in, in, in bodybuilding, in weightlifting. Now your body recognizes itself. Now you start eating breakfast, start eating stress for breakfast. You know what we're talking about. How can I perform 30 days in a row? Uh, it's very simple. More I know what it is to pre perform under pressure, I can take one day after another one. And I can mention the guy you know very well. Mm -hmm. Every day in other city, every day in other city, st sleeping three, four hours and performing at its best. How does he do that? He's in the flow. You know what it is? He, he has pushed his body to that limit. And when there is no pressure, there is no performance. So how to perform? Put yourself under pressure and love it enjoy it most people are scared when it's pressure no you must love it so must let me ask you a question because i obviously I, I prep a lot of people i work with a lot of athletes for competing and so forth in more bodybuilding and these type of events so what would you say to people then like i was we were kind of married to that way of thinking where we have to go in like lick balls to the walls let's say with that aggressive mindset you know taking all the pre-workouts to just spike adrenaline you know from the stimulation would you say that is hindering performance massively and we should learn how to be in a calm state to peak perform well i don't have to say nothing you just say everybody else get tense excited you just get relaxed. Where everybody gets tense, you just relax. Me, I talk with a lot of athletes before event. Most athletes will say, I'm nervous, I have butterfly in the stomach. But the top champion, they will say, before the event, I got so excited. I, I work with dancers. They are people, you know, who vomit before performance and dance. But they are athletes, they're just waiting for the curtain to open. When the curtain opens, poof, they are in another world. And these are the ones who can perform, you know, ballet, you know, they have 20 days in a row, the same show. When people pay, they expect every day is a top performance. How can these dancers will do 20 days in a row, top performance? No up and down that we see in sport. Many I think one performance good, after that, two, three months, nothing, and then come back. Consistency is the name of the game. And those who experience the flu and know how to enter the flu at will, not by accident, at will, are the real champions. And they are not necessarily the best IP. They are not necessarily the most strongest. They are the one who can end the stress the most. And these are the ones, the real champion. And look like very funny. Don't talk about it. Experience it. Put athlete into stressful situation and ask them, now you're 10, your adrenaline is pumping, your heart is at 200 a minute. Now it's time to relax. How to relax? Well, that's the thing. Progressive muscular relaxation. You relax the muscle that you don't need for the performance. You only need to be aware of which one will be you. So muscle are always based on antagonists. When the muscle contract, the antagonist must relax. So it's bodily understanding. And more I'm aware of it, now more I assist the performance by releasing the muscle that, move, that I don't need to perform. We don't need all the 600 muscle in one shot. Some are used, some are not. And when I balance this, then everything becomes flawless, effortless. I have athletes who say, it is so easy to win, it is so hard to achieve the final. When I am in the final, it's the easiest part, because I just relax. Where the other struggle, it's easy. So it's the law of minimum effort. So effortless performance. And look at Usain Bolt, the beautiful, why Usain Bolt was so great? Well, it's like something happened in him. He was not always a champion. And then suddenly something happened with him. He experienced it. And then until he decides to stop, 
it was just winning, 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 winning. I work, I, I work in track and field for 50 years. Uh, Evelyn Ashford, 16 years, four Olympic, four Olympic winning medal. And when she was interviewed, why did you continue running for 16 years? She said, for one thing, that little 10 second something give me something that nothing else have ever in life did. An incredible joy. And why I run? Because I want to experience it. She said very strangely, small competition never trigger it. It has to be a big event. It has to be an Olympic game. It has to be a final for me to experience it. And she said, that's why I run. To experience it. Normal daily life doesn't give me this. I need that pressure where 100,000 people look at you when all the world is watching on TV, that's only then that I experience it. That's the fuel. But how you practice this? How do you, you have to be in there? You have to be in a very stressful environment. Most people hate stress. I work with sense people. It's when the pressure is high that you have to learn to relax. And of course, it's combined with mental exercises, imagery, visualization, muscular control, knowing where it's happening. We have different type of body. We have to learn to control the brain. We have to learn to control the heart. It's emotional and of course, our digestive tract. And you're an athlete to experience when you're going to do your bodybuilding competition, your stomach is totally empty. You don't want food in the stomach. And your diet is restrictive, restrictive until the day of the competition. So you can, you perform with energy that has been stored in your muscle, not in the food that you have eaten, because I know bodybuilder, the day of the competition, you mostly eat nothing because everything has been as less as calorie. I want my skin to be like paper and I have to experience what it is. And, and you know that many bodybuilders, when they take a position, their body starts shivering, they start shaking. For some reason, they cannot hold the position. But the one who relax, my God, it's a pleasure. I enjoy it. I must have fun. I'm not nervous. I look at the face of the people who look at me. I look at their joy. It's, it's a relationship with me and my the people who watch me and now you have fun that's a performing is it should be fun passing exam i work with students why i was in Sri Lanka, i got to 80 graduate he said what's so stressful passing exam i said no why you're stressful because everybody told you an exam is stressful no this is the moment of glory this is your moment of joy this is where you have the chance to let it happen and i say passing exam is so easy when they ask you a question they give you the answer how can you fail they give you the answer in the question. Just relax, read the question, and let the answer coming out of you. You don't think the answer, the answer is coming out of you, it's already inside you. When you are gonna perform in six weeks time, the performance is already inside of you. You spend how many months, how many days, how many hours in the gym? Now you have to trust this body of yours and say, buddy, now it's your time to do your job. Me, I'm just sitting in the driver's seat and I enjoy the show. And I will relax the new body will do what it trains so hard to achieve. Of course, that's, that's the new mindset. That's the new mindset. We have to believe the body that we live in can do the job. We don't have to always ask him to do what to do. The body can do it by itself. You send both when you run. He let his body running is not. He let it happen. Me, I work with Ben Johnson. Everybody know Ben Johnson in Canada, a cheater of the world. But Ben discovered very young. I don't run fast, speed come out of me. My job is to let speed happen. It's, it's brilliant. Of course, for people who are not athletes, it's very hard to understand. Yeah, but I mean, like, like you're speaking about, it's very relevant to everything. It doesn't have to be performance in terms of on a stage or on the Olympic Games. This is just life. I mean, dealing with stress because, you know, there's probably, the, there's more stress um, put on are less athletes or non-athletes and athletes I would imagine because you know a top Olympic athlete and anybody at high level this is their job so they doing everything they can to eliminate the stress in the day-to-day -day life we got stress from bills we got stress from work we got spouses we got children we got whatever it is so if we can control that stressful environment and this is what I was saying to one of my clients a few weeks ago he manages a, a large team and he, he was always stressed he come in and his, his anxiety was through the roof and he was like really stressed and I said to him look I said you're never gonna get, remove that stress it's always gonna be there because the position you're in more and more is gonna come it's not about removing it, it's about managing it. Because when you manage it, you can take on more. 
and then you can be more productive. Yeah. If you try and exhaust it, try and remove it, you're never going to be able to tolerate more. And in the line of work he was going, he was climbing. So he was like, there's more going to come. So look at management strategies and so yes. forth. And so, you have to simulate it in our training. Me, even this, you know, I work with athletes, we have simulation of medal ceremony. Because winning the event is one thing, but getting the medal is where you pride, you know, when they raise the flag and the national limit, anything. So we practice medal ceremony because it is part of the performance. Because some athletes are afraid of winning. So we have to yeah. practice, you know, walking, listening to your name on the loudspeaker, moving on the first day, somebody putting a medal in your name, giving you the medal, raising your flag, and then you see all the emotion associated with the performance. And it's all part of it. It's you incredible because you everything as it is. Everything I'm discovering now more so, obviously I've always believed in believing in yourself and so forth, but everything I'm discovering more so everything is coming to me is all about the mindset. I mean, it's so important. Yep. The mindset has to be the most important. Like you said, the mind, the heart and the, the stomach, obviously. Um, it, it all has to be in line. And we talked about the, you know, the, you, you mentioned the five systems, you know, and this, yes. when I was reading uh, the PDF, everything is more, is everything is based around the same in terms of the chakra flow of energy and, you yes, know, yes, it's all connected. It's incredible. I mean, and this is where, like you said, it's been around for generations, but now people are looking into it more. You know, the people are studying more the law of attraction, visualization, yeah. affirmations, yeah. you know, positive mindset. And because that's what's going to separate you from somebody else who can take more. You know, and that's going to yep. affect your performance. And we perform in, in everything we do. Like I said, it's not just on stage. It's not just on the games. It's every step of your day is a performance, right? Everything is a performance. And if that's it's... What, as you mean, we are on earth to perform. And performing life is every day. We have to perform 30,000 breaths a day. <laughs> and, you know, we use the word inspiration, inspire. What is inspiration? Inspire is not only the air we breath, it's the energy we take in. It's the thought we associate it with, it's the feeling we bring. That's inspiration. And expiration is what? Where well, now we release everything that has been inspired. And that's the performance and expression. Yeah. Extraction, that's what it's all about. And in metabolic language, it's called anabolization, catabolization. Performance is a catabolic event. So it's burning energy, but what energy? Not only calorie, not only food, electromagnetic energy. We release, we discharge our energy. That's what it's all about. When you speak at Toastmaster, you discharge your energy. Everything you prepare, what you wanted to say, and then you let your body do its job. You don't even tell your body what word to say. They come out by themselves. Yeah, I mean... They work out, just relax, enjoy the show, and let the body perform. It's brilliant. Um, thank you for coming on. I, I'm going to close there because I know I don't want to teach so much of your time, but I would love to do this again. And hopefully we can get more of a better setup where we can have maybe a split screen, um, maybe a bit. I'm trying to get something set up that the environment looks a bit more professional on my end as well. So we can do these a bit more often. Um, and I would love to talk to you more about, like to say, the flow, the mindset, um, any motivational things that you can offer me, not just for myself, but again, so I can pass out there. And I can speak to volumes and I can encourage, obviously, everyone moving forward yes. in that direction. So I yes, just want to say thank you. Um, where can where can people reach out to you if somebody wants to, you know, have you got any recent books? I know you're always, uh, <laughs> you're always got your, your mind in something, expressing yourself. So where can people find you? And if somebody wants to reach out to you, what platforms uh, I'm on are you on? Facebook. I'm on Facebook. I have two accounts. I post very little. I follow people mostly, but me, I'm not the guy who posts them. I'm not a YouTuber. Uh, I wrote things for my client on a one-to-one. -one. Everything is personalized. Everything is customized. Even my corporate client, I do a design program that is like signature program for that client. I don't cross sell these programs to other clients because I have sometimes same industry, different client. What I do for one client become confidential to that client. And that's my approach with everything. But I'm always reachable through Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, send me an email. <laughs> and what what is your email address? Yeah. What, what is your email address? Do you have a website or what's your email address? Yes, well, you can send me at my Gmail. It's Michel Coach in one word, M-I-C-H-E-L-C-O-A-C-H, Michel Coach, one word, at gmail.com. 
Okay, I'm writing that down as well. You're going to get a lot of emails <laughs> from myself. Uh, but thank you very much. I hope it's been beneficial for anybody watching and listening. It's definitely been for me, and I just want to thank you for taking the time out of your day. I know you're very busy on your schedule, but like I said, some of the messages you've just passed over is definitely going to be what I've been implementing in my own routine, especially the breathing, because like we discussed, I want to take on more. Um, you know, the sky's the limit, but we have to be able to deal with the stress that's placed on us. So thank you once again, and I hope to see you soon. I will see you in Los Angeles, though, in November. So I'll be coming across. Yes, and uh, all right. Okay, take care, okay. Michelle. Have a safe flight, and uh, we'll get you back okay. on soon, yeah? Thank you. Okay, thank Bye, you. everybody. Take care, guys. ChristianWilliamsPD.com. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. Stay tuned for more videos coming up. Thank you.